Hello, and welcome to Geek Week, the new original HCAM show where we talk about the latest news in everything nerdy and pop culture, just to keep you up to date. I'm your host, Matt Clark. In addition to being the master control operator here at HCAM, I am passionate about movies, comic books, and video games, and have been since I was a kid. And now I'm here to share my love of all things nerdy with you. Joining me today are two of my best friends from town, Sam Cherko, a um, history teacher at Stacy Middle School in Milford, and Alex Kershey, an actor in New York City. Today we are going to be talking about the uh, upcoming release of Spider-Man Far From Home, as well as the, up, as the recent hit, Avengers Endgame. So, welcome guys, thanks for being here. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Yeah, so um, obviously the three of us were all big nerds. Yeah. So, let's start with you, Sam. Well, what are you excited about for uh, Spider-Man in a few weeks? I'm really excited to see Spidey back uh, in his own solo film on the big screen, and obviously to see what has happened since... Mm -hmm. The fallout from from Endgame, just the the universe in recovery, and I'm sure we'll talk more about that in a moment. Yeah, and Alex, what are you what are you thinking? Well, I think it goes without saying uh, that uh, that I mean, obviously, we're going to be talking about this, so I, there's going to be some light sort of spoiler risk in all of this. Um, uh, but uh, I I've tried to not look at too too much about the new movie, but one thing that I do know is that one of my favorite Spider-Man universe characters is appearing mm -hmm. for the first time in live action in this movie. One of the reasons I wanted you on this episode. And, I mean, I guess we can talk about it, because you, got, you guys all know. Uh, uh, Mysterio's going to be in the movie, mm -hmm. and uh, I don't know what they're doing with him. I have a theory that I'm absolutely, definitely going to get into, but... Uh, I, I think we could talk about that, that theory, if... Right now? Okay. Yeah, sure. uh, okay, so, here's the thing. A few years ago, we got the Doctor Strange movie. Yep, the Sorcerer Supreme. And of course, we get the Sorcerer Supreme, Doctor Strange himself, played by Benedict Cumberbatch. Actually, I don't and, think uh, he is the Sorcerer Supreme yet in the uh, movies. I, but I am that's... unclear on that because she does make this point. Uh, the 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 Ancient One mm -hmm. makes this point about how he's uh, well, about how he's supposed to be the best of us, and how like the whole timeline of this world is set. Set, not set in stone, but like you know, like he's, he will be the Sorcerer Supreme. At, it, he's at some point going to be the greatest all of probably all Doctor sorcerers. Strange too, if it ever comes <laughs> yeah. out, if and when. I but hope so. um, in Guardians of the Galaxy two, we see a character who isn't from Earth who uses the same type of magic that uh, that Doctor Strange does, and it's explicitly he's explicitly in the comics the Sorcerer Supreme of an alternate universe. That's something that is like, right. and, he, and, a, and a member of the original Guardians of the Galaxy. Um, I, I, I'd like to make it clear, though, that um, just because that character is in the movies doesn't mean in that continuity he is the alternate universe sorcerer. Of course, and I was going to get into that because, of course, because all the MCU versions of characters are very specific, like new versions of those characters often built on a mythic core or changed in some fundamental way. Spider-Man movie is a great example of that because yes. they do a lot with the Vulture in that movie, another one of my favorite um, a really good villain. rendition and, of, and of the Vulture. Best, Michael and Keaton one of the best was, MCU villains by Michael far. Keaton was a great casting for, for yeah. Vulture. Yeah, he Absolutely. did a really good job in it as the Birdman. Um, but, that was a different Michael Keaton movie. <laughs> uh, but, um, but, but the reason I mention it and the reason that it's important is because they are clearly at least trying to make that magical connection. Yeah. The character communicates in a very similar way in the 0.5 seconds of movie that he's in in an after credit sequence as the magic from Doctor Strange. And in, in the only part of the trailer that I've seen at all for this movie, it seems as if they're seeming to present Mysterio in a similar way. Now, the, thing about, that, spell the thing about that is the background on Mysterio is that Mysterio is, in the comics, a special effects artist and genius mm -hmm. who manages to use his knowledge of any number of things, whatever's convenient for the plot, and his knowledge of special effects to mm -hmm. essentially plan elaborate scenarios and present himself as some kind of extra-dimensional being, alien or other. Uh, there's, a, there's a very, very good version of Mysterio done in the Spider-Man 2 video game. Yes. Where, Mysterio, where yeah. Mysterio deliberately presents himself as an alien and uh, uses drugs and mirrors and like stunt doubles and all these things to essentially trick Spider-Man into thinking that there are tons of Mysterios everywhere and that he's like replaced the Statue of Liberty with a giant Mysterio and all these things. And we know explicitly in that universe, as in most Mysterio appearances, that Mysterio's ab ab like abilities are special effects, that they aren't yes. actually him being magical, they're technology or whatever. 
Um, now, again, that doesn't necessarily mean that this Mysterio is that, but we also see in the trailer all these big, like, elementals, or, or whatever they are, whatever they're doing with it. I'm sorry if you haven't seen any of the trailers. I have. I, I, okay. I think we... I don't think you've seen the most recent trailer. I haven't. I've only seen the first Far From Home trailer. I have seen both trailers. Okay. You obviously haven't seen... The second one at all, and... Yeah. Uh, Except for the first 10 seconds of it, which has huge spoilers in it for a movie at least I had seen. That's a different point. Well, we can get into that in a um, second, but... but... But long story short, I think that because Doctor Strange is public in this universe... Yes. Mm -hmm. um, at, by this point... Yeah, he's outwardly... And there, a, we've seen a sorcerer sorcerers do doctor. things. Like, we've seen sorcerers do things now in public in this, this franchise as of the time that this movie takes mm -hmm. place. Um, I think that what the what what my theory about what it is is that all of the like elementals or whatever they are in, um, I'm, I'm hoping that one of them is explicitly Hydra Man, but that's a different point. Um, <laughs> that these big elementals in that movie are going to be uh, elaborate tricks, somehow performed by rigged by using explosives, visuals, whatever by. Uh, Mysterio, and that Mysterio is going to be a guy who basically said, oh, I can seem like I'm a magician and then become a superhero and, like, gain fame, and then that Spider-Man has is, has wrecked his plans by being there yes. to help him stop the crimes that he himself has created to exist. Yes. Now, if that's not what they do, if Mysterio is just a magical superhero, I've kind of always wanted a, like, fun anti-hero Mysterio for reasons I'll, I can't get into <laughs> right now. I mean, I, I, think, I think that a... I think that Mysterio as a hero is an interesting take. I personally hope you're correct. Yeah. I hope he is just a straight up villain. Yeah. If, if if we get heroic Mysterio, then that's fine. I hope there's just a, um, I hope there's a good villain for everyone to fight in the end. They could do the like the the Baron Mordo thing, where like he's kind of a good guy, and then he. But then later they're maybe going to do something with him because Baron Mordo was in a movie and then hasn't shown up since. At the end of Doctor Strange. And throughout Doctor Strange, he was painted as sort of a guide for Steven. Yeah. And, um, and then it was just like, oh, my, my beliefs are different and I can't keep doing this anymore. So. But yeah. I'm would they, I mean, I, I guess that they could... Talk, sorry, go ahead. Anyways, would they make... Mordo a villain in a film franchise he didn't begin in? I, I think... Would that be oh, too in, much of a jump? In Spider-Man? Oh, yeah. you mean in, I, don't, I don't think he's no, going to no, show no, up no. in Spider-Man. Oh, I thought well, that's what you were insinuating. No, 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 sorry. I, was gonna I, say. I just think no, that they're going to have to bring him back at some point. Oh, no, I, I think they, they absolutely will bring Baron Mordo. Baron Mordo being a a secondary character, a supporting character in Doctor Strange. Yeah. Um, an ally also of Doctor sorcerer. Strange. Who, who another has, sorcerer. Who has different opinions about how magic should be used, yes. what the goal of this organization should be, etc. who et should possess it. But also, that's totally what they could do with, and like, obviously I would miss a little bit of the idea of Mysterio as a villain who has to do extensive prep work, because I've always liked that. Yeah. But if he is actually explicitly magical in this world, that doesn't preclude the idea that he made these elemental things so that he could defeat them as a, as a hero. That's like a very, I mean, that's the that's incredible. A, yeah, exactly. <laughs> that, that's that is, syndrome. that is, yeah. Like, and, and believe me, I'm not complaining about any version of that type and of plot. I would plot. love that. I just, I just really do think that no matter which way they do it, I really want it to be that the elementals are a hustle that I, Mysterio is behind. I do too. So I, I don't know what you've seen in terms of promotional stuff for Far From yeah. Home, but there's one still that I'd, I'd like to talk about that sort of leads to this conclusion. I don't know if you've seen this or not. Okay, then I won't speak about it. Mm. Um, but it, it makes me wonder about the heroic or villainous nature of Mysterio in this film. Is it him and with a bubblehead? No, I actually haven't seen Bubblehead Mysterio yet. I'm, I'm, I, I hope he's in the movie. I think he is, but I don't... <laughs> I have a... I, uh, it's... I think he's in the first trailer, isn't he? Doesn't he have a bubblehead in the first trailer? It's point? been months Doesn't matter. since I've seen Bubblehead Mysterio is in the movie. I'm he, certain He of does it. have the bubblehead in the first trailer. Thank God. <laughs> Don't worry about it. The yeah. bubblehead is a thing that Mysterio has. I mean, Spider-Man always makes fun of Mysterio for being a guy with a fishbowl on his head. Yeah, because like, he's great. And it's always foggy and... Comics were really it, weird. Is it, like, what, is it a thing about Mysterio or is it like a... No, it's just an... It's, uh, we see... Sure. Mysterio with his hand on Peter Parker's shoulder. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, they're definitely going to, I think okay. that Mysterio is going to, because there's that line, he, the, there's least, that one line from the, from the first trailer that I did see, the like, uh, the like, you don't want any part in this line that Jake Gyllenhaal has, which yeah. is, I think, him saying, it, you're messing up my plan. It yeah. seems like he is at least somewhat heroic. 
or portrayed well, as. I think he's portraying heroic. himself as heroic. But again, that's just back to the. Theory. I mean, well, like from from what the trailers are showing. Mysterio is a heroic character that is assisting Spider-Man. I think right. it's going to be Or Spider-Man is assisting him. It's a little unclear. It, I mean, Spider-Man is the main yeah. character. Um, but I, I, think, I think the twist of the movie is going yeah. to be your theory. Yeah, I, that, I agree with you. That this is all well, a ploy. I agree with your agreeing with me. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Um, so, so let's... Um, Alex, I, I think it was you who mentioned... Or maybe it was you, Sam. I don't, I don't remember. Mentioned... Um, the advertising for this movie spoiled something for the most recent Avengers Endgame, which came out almost two months ago at this point. We're going to, yeah, we're going to have to talk about it. So obviously there's going to be spoilers from this point. So, Probably, um, right? I mean, uh, I don't, I don't want to presume. The movie's existence yes. was a spoiler. <laughs> so I don't, I don't, so, so for those of, so the, for people who don't know, at the, Avengers Endgame is basically part two of Avengers Infinity War, which mm -hmm. came out the year before. Avengers 3 and 4, they form a, like a complete two-part story. And, it were, and were even originally called Infinity Wars part one and two. Mm -hmm. The Harry Potter effect, if you were. Um, Mockingjay. I'm glad they changed it. <laughs> yeah, um, it's better this way. Yeah. But, uh, oh no, it absolutely for this is. For these movies. It, oh, it absolutely makes like, sense for these movies. Yeah. I'm not going to say anything about those other series. Like, they did what was probably best for those yeah, stories. I don't know if that's the case. <laughs> it, it doesn't Captain matter. Fire should have been the one that had two movies. If that's what I hope so. It's a, but that's a different point. Anyway, so Anyways. sorry. Um, <laughs> Thanos is successful at the end of Infinity War. And he snaps his fingers and... Just uh, half, half of all life in the universe. Yeah, half of all sentient beings in the universe. I think is actually well. They don't say sentient beings nope. because they clarify they say, living li things. They li say living things, but that's not trees. Um, in the actual well, movie. here's the thing: the directors, the directors, <laughs> the directors <laughs> said that it's plants and animals too. But it which isn't. If, if, if that is true, then that completely that's negates Thanos' reset. plan. It, it literally cannot be true because we see trees. Thank you. <laughs> like, and, and that's like true. There, there isn't like weird forests in Endgame where where there's just weird spotty sections where a bunch of trees just lock the, the the die roll. Yeah. The, well, I guess but, the coin flip. Well, but also like Thanos' whole plan is oh, there's too many living things, and for the universe to survive, we have to cut them in half so that the resources can be spread out more evenly. And it's like okay, that that you know is a motivation. Yeah. Um, let's not, you know, make more. Let's have, not have a moral discussion on whether or not we think Thanos is right. I mean, he, um, his, his idea is right. His the way he well, goes about it. His is methodology wrong. is explicitly about proving himself right yeah. rather than about solving the problem that he has, which is why he's like an egotistical villain. I because think, yeah. because like he were a lot of his motivation works from like a human understanding perspective. The character is good because he's such an in depth character because we spend so much time with him, but. The reason that he does things the way he does things is for the same reason that he said at the beginning of, of uh, there's that section yeah. in Infinity War where he's like, my people didn't listen to me and then it didn't work and that's why I'm doing like he yeah. like he's doing this because he wants to prove that he's yeah. right. But his whole plan goes out the window if he erased half of the animals and plants as well. Okay, that wipes out half the resources. Too. I mean, I think, At least did, for I think he did explicitly wipe out half. Who the knows animals. what other alien that, species? He did explicitly on. wipe out half the animals because that's why in. Minor spoiler, spoiler for, for Endgame. Endgame. Game. There's birds in that. Well, scene. that's, that's what why we're, they're that's surprised what we're, that birds that's showed back. That's up. where we're getting to. One of the one of the heroes wiped out in Infinity War is Spider Man, and then yeah. you know that's you know that would be interesting if if Sony didn't make Marvel put out a Spider Man Far From Home trailer. Right. What like two months two before, before Endgame, Endgame even came out? It was Which, more like. Four months, I think, actually. Well, maybe. Right? I don't it was a while. fully remember. It was sometime this year. But... My theory about that, which I knew was so far-fetched, but I think would have been a really gutsy move for Marvel, is that that trailer was fake. Yeah. And that um, they put this out to trick people into thinking that Spider-Man and all the characters that were dusted at Infinity War were going to obviously return at Endgame. Hence the Mysterio connection. Yeah, but... Obviously, that they would, would never been, do that. That would have been a bold move on their part. Yeah, to remove Spider-Man and Black Panther. I thought was happening in the Soul Stone. And uh, Winter Soldier. And, and all, those all of these other characters from this universe. I thought it was happening up. in the Soul Realm, that Adam Warlock <laughs> was going to go there, and that that was going to be the, the movie, I guess. That would be interesting. But, uh, but yeah. anyway, I digress. Yeah. I apologize. So, no, no, yeah. So that, that, that was a I huge... Had, I had a similar... I thought maybe it was going to be a prequel or something. And they were, I thought it would be funny. Something. Yeah, maybe. So... I mean, that's what happened with 
Ant-Man. Ant-Man and the Wasp came out after Infinity War. And Ant-Man was wasn't in Infinity War, but Ant-Man and the Wasp takes place leading up to mm -hmm. Infinity War. Yeah. Um, Weird that nobody, like... I mean, they do, they do say in Infinity War, like, oh, Scott's under house arrest, yeah. but... Also, based on the timing of the movie Ant-Man and the Wasp, if that if Infinity War takes the amount of time it takes to take, I think they might have been able to go check in with him. There is there's he like goes really big at one point during the plot of the movie Infinity War because Infinity War happens. I think they're a little busy. If it, my point is, if it happens at the end of if, if at the end of Infinity War is when the after credit sequence of Ant-Man and the Wasp happens, right? The Ant-Man and the Wasp after credit sequence happens long enough after the plot of the movie Ant-Man and the Wasp uh, that he's yeah. capable of rebuilding this pocket time machine. That's fair. Yeah. So my thought was just, does that mean that that movie? That's fine though. I mean, it's, it's not it doesn't like stress me out. I'm glad that the movies happened the way they did. Me too. You know, you are right, actually. That, that is a little bit of a hole in the plot. More in the plot of Ant-Man Ant -Man than yeah. in... I think more in the plot of Infinity War because they say... I mean, it's really because Ant-Man... Uh, maybe it, they just don't know the extent of Scott probably, Lang's they're, house arrest. They're all, I don't think they're actually really paying that much attention to Scott after they know that he's under house arrest. It's yeah. the same reason why they don't go try and get Clint. It's like... They're, they have He's to do what they have to, to do. do. Yeah. They have families. Because they both have families. Yeah, that's I mean, they, they even say in Infinity War, it's too hard on their families. I think, I think that if, even if the Avengers are paying attention to what's happening in the plot of... What's it called? They're already scattered all over the place at the beginning of Infinity War. I mean, Corvus Glaive shows up in Europe and is just like, <laughs> I'm an elf. I have to stop Vision and Scarlet Witch from having a good time. Corvus Glaive being one of the... Millions generals of, of yeah. the generals of Thanos. That's he's an a he's a, he's a big he's a big elf man. He's great. Is he an elf? Is he he's, supposed he's, to be an he's elf? He's basically an elf. He's yeah. not actually a dark elf. He. This is a matter. All there's, the, a, the, there's a whole no. weird comic thing about this where all of the Black Order are different. Dis, they're either distinct. Like the reason they're called the Children of Thanos and the Black Order. Like the reason they're both called those things in the MCU, is because they they like they're like scooped up from other planets. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But like. In the MCU, we don't like spend time figuring out who they are, which is which is or fine. Planet that like, yeah. we, we can't have like a little like I would as much as I would love a movie that's just a weird feel good like like <laughs> Breakfast Club romp, which is Thanos going around the galaxy Collecting being like, these "Do you want to come with me, Corvus Glaive?" And Corvus Glaive has a little elf boy being like, "I'd love to," and then <laughs> and then he goes to get Call Obsidian, and Call Obsidian, who's a giant ogre guy he's just like boom, 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 boom. he joins him because he doesn't speak he's he doesn't have any I, I think I think <laughs> Call Obsidian um, was a name created for the movie actually yes he used to be called uh, Black Dwarf yes which still does follow the, the name convention of type of black color and thing, <laughs> thing. It's just a little more a little more it's, just, it's, it's not inherently interesting Black Dwarf is just you know oh he's a place he's a, he's a star maybe is the implication that he's a star I don't know I have no idea. We don't learn much about those characters in oh, but the movie, yeah, the just enough to, <laughs> for them to be good villains. Yeah. So the existence of Spider-Man, it was a spoiler. Is what so, we're yeah, to. that's... Um, and, of course, you know, Endgame was the end of 11 years of movies. Mm -hmm. I believe there were, what, 22 movies leading mm -hmm. up to Endgame? So, yeah. Of, I don't even know how many franchises. Well, we're not gonna Iron Man, Iron Hulk, Iron Thor, Man. Captain America, Guardians, Black Panther, Ant-Man, others. Just to name a few, yeah. Um, and then, but, you know, this isn't the end. We have Spider-Man coming out in a matter of weeks. We don't know what's to hold for the future. Except Guardians 3. You, yep, that's true. But that was supposed um, to come out before this, right? That was the whole thing. I think it was supposed to be next year, but because so, of that too. whole mess with the director getting fired and then rehired, and then he is making Suicide, Suicide Squad, Squad also for 2021. The Suicide Squad sequel. Yep. Feet. Which is going to be good feet. because of him. Feet. Never mind. We, 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 this cannot happen right now, but there's a character that I'm very excited about. Yeah, you're, you're the one character. <laughs> um, I, I guess we can mention it. We don't want to... Do, I don't know if he knows. We'll talk about uh, this. I know. Um, you know? Yeah. The rat catchers in the movie. The I know. Your, your favorite obscure Batman. <laughs> My favorite Batman. Yeah, <laughs> you, you wanted him... You wanted the rat catcher to be used in something. Yeah. And More than in, anything else yeah. in your entire And the first life, thing it's in is all you want is this movie. Yeah. Rat Catcher. The, the, Rat Catcher, the Rat Catcher's first appearance in uh, a movie animated or otherwise will be Suicide Squad. 
He's not even in the Batman animated series from the 90s. No, like, he, which he, has, like, he is else. referenced yeah. in a bunch of things. There's a video game in which he's the main villain. There's really? Like, you know, or yeah. an early game boss. He's not the main villain. It's not a very good game from what okay. I've heard. But. Yeah, me too. So, well, to go back to Avengers, yeah. just... Um, who do you guys want to see for superheroes being introduced? You know, there's so many Marvel characters that haven't... There's a ton in the movies. There's so many in the movies. It's, it's an amazing uh, piece of media that they've done this much in just Absolutely. 10 years. But there's so many more characters they could introduce. Who, yeah. oh, who yeah. would you want to see? Sam, who would Countless. you want to see? I mean... If you can... If you so can as a, <laughs> yeah, it's okay. So, my personal inclusion into the MCU, the Marvel Cinematic Universe, is Moon Knight. Uh, he's always been a favorite of mine. I've been reading his comics for years. Um, well, go on. And Tell a bit about him. So he is a mercenary who is from the United States. He goes to Egypt, uh, is killed in Egypt, and is resurrected by Khonshu, uh, the Egyptian god of the moon and nighttime and travelers. Um, so it, it combines mythology and action, uh, and he also has um, multiple personality uh, The disorder. Associative Identity Disorder. I was trying to remember. I knew it was DID. I couldn't remember the new DSM designated term. Um, so he has DID. So he plays through all of these different personalities. He, he's a taxi driver and this mercenary and a billionaire. People like to classify him as Marvel's Batman because he's got gadgets and um, trauma and trauma galore. Um, he's and a he's fascinating rich. character and I would I would love to see how he interacts with other mystically inclined and physically inclined heroes of the universe. And and there was talks for a little while about him getting a Netflix series back when yeah. Marvel was mm -hmm. doing those like Daredevil and Jessica Jones and stuff. I mean that's kind of that's kind of where but my answer to your question is tied to which is that they had this this thing where they were doing all these TV shows, right? Mm -hmm. And the TV shows were all building up to The Defenders, which was supposed to have Moon Knight in it originally, and then they yeah. did it a different way. But they never actually had those characters appear in the Marvel Cinematic Universe movies, including Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., which was way more, even more explicitly tied mm -hmm. to the MCU than even those shows were, because mm -hmm. those shows would mention things that happened, but in general, like... And and it had like weird things like um like Lady Sif from the Thor yeah. movie showing mm -hmm. up sometimes. Yeah. It did, which is and awesome. She didn't even show up in Thor Ragnarok. Yeah, unfortunately. Well, Scheduling think... conflicts with the actress. Okay, that's I... good to know. That's that's what the reason. Okay. I think <laughs> that maybe that kind of, but like so we know that they're now doing, in the post Endgame world, a series of Hulu animated shows which aren't in the Marvel Cinematic Universe but are the Marvel animated universe. Which, because of the topic of this conversation, I won't necessarily get into, but they're building up to The Offenders, and I'm very, very excited about it, because they're doing a MODOK TV show, a Hit Monkey TV show, a Dazzler and Tigra TV show, and then The Offenders, and it's... Oh, and a Howard the Duck TV show, and it's going to be so Duck, good. Yep. But, um, but they're doing a bunch of TV show spinoffs. Like they, said, they said they were going to do the Hawkeye one, right? Did they? Yeah, they, I, I saw that recently, They actually. said that on the Disney streaming service, there's going to be live-action TV show spinoffs of the MCU that have the actors from the movies. And then Tom Hiddleston two is confirmed. playing... Tom Hiddleston is playing confirmed. Loki. Or four Tom confirmed, actually. Right. That's unfortunate. Um, Tom Hiddleston's Loki show. Uh... Scarlet Witch, yeah, and oh, right. maybe called Scarlet Witch and Vision, and Vision? Which, 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 which again is weird because Vision died. But I think that I have a theory about that. But um, there's uh, Winter Soldier and Falcon. Yes, which I'm very excited for because mm -hmm. Falcon is my all-time yep. favorite. And superhero. then there's apparently a Hawkeye. Mm -hmm. one. Hmm. There's apparently a Hawkeye one. I thought there was a Hawkeye one. Maybe I'm misremembering. I but think I saw is, that myself exist, last week. If those exist, those have the capacity, if they have the higher budget, especially high enough budget to afford the actors from the movies, right. if they have that high budget, they can introduce tons of villains mm -hmm. and have those villains and heroes enter into enter into the Marvel Cinematic Universe in a more serious way. Especially yep. if they think that the Disney streaming service is going to have a captive audience to watch those Which shows. They if they will. think enough people watch them, Disney. then they can slip characters into the movies with relatively little... With relatively little additional information. Construction. 
Not much so, we can do about that. The short answer to the question of characters that I that I really want to see, I think that some of the problems that I have with Endgame, the kind of the only real problems that I have with Endgame can be solved by them delivering on a payoff from Guardians 2, which is if they do Adam Warlock and if he's connected to the Soul Dimension as he is in comics, All the comics. then he can scoop people out of the Soul Realm or whatever it's called. I mean, who knows what they'll do that. Yeah, I hope that. that. Do it. Like, Adam Warlock's definitely coming because he's set up in Guardians 2. Mm -hmm. As are the original Guardians. Please be in Guardians 3. Well, oh my god, please. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take this opportunity. We have to wrap up in a minute. Uh, sorry to cut No, no off, worries. Sam. We'll talk about the original Guardians some other time. Yeah, uh, we'll, we, d we should definitely keep this conversation going at some time. Uh, thank you guys both so much for being here in our pilot episode. I'm very excited about the show, and um, I'm glad to have both of you on. Absolutely. Thank you thank for having you. us. I'm, I'm, I was loving being um, here. Yeah, thank you. Well, that's all the time we have for today. I'd like to thank both of you so much for coming out to our, um, you know, first episode. I'm really excited about this show. And I'd like to thank um, our audience for watching, and I hope that you enjoyed our takes and our insights into the often confusing world of the MCU and, you know, other nerdy things. Thanks for watching, and remember, never be afraid to geek out about the things you love. See you next time. We've developed an idea of, of maybe just having homework-free periods as opposed to having a week-long homework-free period during the middle of the year. So uh, we've instituted a policy this year that there'll be no homework on all vacations and all long weekends. Uh, so we, uh, we spoke to the staff about that, they're on board, we spoke to the, the teachers at Back to School Night, they seem to be, I mean the parents, they seem to be excited about that. So mm -hmm. um, it's something we're trying, we're hoping that it works, if it doesn't we'll continue to adjust and, and, mm -hmm. and do what we need to do to meet the needs of the students, but it's an effort that we're making. Have you ever considered texting and driving? If so, you should know the consequences. If caught texting and driving for the first time, you could get an $100 fine plus your license taken away for 60 days. The consequences only get worse the more you get caught. Even if you don't get caught, there could be serious effects. You could get into a car accident and hurt yourself or someone else. Texting and driving is a very dangerous combination, so stop before this happens to you. What would you do if someone gave you a television station? Would you run a camera? Host your own programs? Would you like to be a director or edit your own shows? Or maybe be a big time producer or cover your local sports? Well, your station is ready for action. Start your media adventures with the workshop at HCAM, from setting lights and directing talent to editing. HCAM makes quality programs and teaches you to do the same. If you're interested in having fun and making a difference in the community, why not do it on TV? Join our crew and get your own piece of the action.